Amen. Amen. So today, we will continue. So I just want to welcome everyone. All the people who are following online, I welcome you as well. Um, it's good to have you at Cross Point Fellowship Church. Amen. This is a family church. Amen. 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 All the colors are here. All the languages are here. And then we, we, we're really happy to be together. Amen. 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 So welcome. I'm going to read quickly from the first book of Samuel, uh, the first chapter. Um, I will not probably read everything, but I will revisit uh, my message so that I finish with Hannah this Sunday. Amen. <clears throat> my title today is Thank God for Penina. Amen. You, you will understand later. So let's, let's go back to the birth of Samuel. The Bible says in the first book of Samuel, there was a certain man whose name was Elkanah. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other one Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Pay attention to the word, it's very important because I won't go back to my last week message. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship with sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Opni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Penina, and to all of her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. And the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord has closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Why are you downhearted? Asked the husband. Don't I mean more to you than the, son, the sons? Once when they had finished eating and drinking, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her, in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look at your servant misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she, wept, she, she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my lord. Hannah replied, I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace and may the Lord of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave 
birth to a son. His name was Samuel. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. amen. So I read this chapter because whatever we, we're going to talk about today is in reference to this chapter that we discussed last Sunday. Amen. amen. So here, the most important thing is we have um, Elkanah who has two wives. The first one, Hannah, after so many years living with the first wife, uh, with no children, we have now, he took another wife, uh, Penina, and Penina had so many kids. The Bible says she had ten sons. And the Bible says she had sons and daughters. So you can imagine, I mean, every year she had a child. But the problem was that Penina made Hannah's life miserable. She was mocking her every single day because the husband loved her and the husband maybe did not love her that much. So she kept on mocking her. Amen. What I'm going to, to tell you today is important. Just follow me. Amen. Amen. Hannah for all those years, she did not have a child. She knew, like I said last Sunday, something was not right with her. If you are unable to give a child, it won't take that long to figure out that, oh, something is not working as you want it. And the people start pushing the husband, the the husband, family, your own family, and friends. All of that, it's okay. But when people are mocking you in your own house, it becomes even more difficult. But Hannah continued to believe God for a child. It could have been 10, 15 years with no child. But she continued to believe God for a child. On a daily basis, she prayed for a child. We have to understand here how this was important. Actually, she prayed for a son. Sometimes when you go through problems, your prayer becomes just, you started like this, and then slowly, slowly, you don't believe God for children anymore. You know, maybe she went from 10 to 5, and now she was just one. Give me a son, just a son. That was her prayer. In the Jewish tradition, a woman who could not have children was considered cursed. People would say, something is wrong with you. There must be a sin or something in your life because every woman was supposed to have a, a, a child. But as I said, Hannah was a prayerful woman. So now we have on the other side, <clears throat> the other wife, Penina. The Bible does not really say if she was even praying. So I can assume she was not that prayerful. She was disrespectful to Hannah. She spent her time mocking her, provoking every single day. But she was the one who was having kids every, every year. I mean, I can assume. But Hannah will stay quiet. Hannah won't fight. Hannah won't respond. But Hannah will pray. Amen. Amen. Hannah's life, Hannah's name <clears throat> means grace. In the Bible, every person... The, name, the meaning of the name of the person is what God has intended that person to do, who it ought to be. So here we have Hannah, which means grace. So her life was supposed to include everything that comes with grace. We can talk about joy, peace, favor. But the reality of the situation was something different. 
That is what I'm saying, my first point. Hannah was blessed just on paper. The paper says you are blessed. Your name says you are blessed. But the reality of the situation, you are not. You are crying a lot. You are deeply troubled. That's what the Bible says. So the person who was supposed to display grace was displaying sorrow, was displaying sadness, was not happy. What a huge discrepancy, eh? Ah, joy was replaced by sorrow. And you can understand because she did not have kids, she wanted to have kids, fruitfulness was replaced by unproductivity. Amen. But Hannah continued to believe God for something that her name meant. If my name means grace, so I should display grace around me. Whatever is happening does not co co coincide, there is no coincidence between the fact, the truth, and what God has put in me. And for that reason, she kept praying God. This morning, I am sure I'm talking to a person who can identify themselves as Hannah. I can say every one of us is a kind of Hannah. Amen. Yes. We are all saved. Christ lives in us. Amen. But what do we see? We experience what? Dryness here, dryness there. We experience problems here and there on a daily basis. At work, at home, everywhere. We are surrounded by problems. We proclaim 2019, the year of fruitfulness, but until now, almost half the year has passed by. And you on your side, your life looks like you are experiencing unproductivity. Fruitfulness was meant to bring things. I mean, you don't have any store to keep everything that will come your way. But what do you see? Unproductivity. Hallelujah. There is a French proverb that say, your night has been too long. The day is coming. What I mean is, your night has been way too long. Behold, the sun is about to rise. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to connect to that. This message is not a coincidence. Some of us are going through problems. The night seems to be way too long. But I'm saying the sun is about to rise up. Amen. Prophecies like this morning are just popping up from all over the place. Amen. Brothers and sisters, raise up your spiritual antennas. Amen. God says this morning in Isaiah 43, 19, in the New Living Translation, I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to read again. God is saying this morning, I am about to do a new thing. I've already begun. Open your eyes and you will see. I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. So for all of us who are experiencing a season of unproductivity, God is saying, I am creating a new thing. Amen. The season of sorrow and the season of depression, hallelujah, Amen. is about to go. Amen. God is saying, I am creating a new thing. Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay, let me say, your seasons of cry, of lack of sleep. Do I have anyone who cries at least once a week here? Or a person who lacks sleep? 
because of issues. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Hallelujah. God is saying to you, this cries and this of lack of sleep, this season is coming to an end. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some of us are lost, are discouraged. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 19, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. You are lost because you do not see. You are lost because you don't have guidance. You are lost because you are bombarded by so many things coming from left and right. God is saying, all of this is about to change. Amen. I am going to put a pathway in the wilderness Amen. because Jesus is a lamp at our feet. You just go. Hallelujah. And you will see with your own eyes where you're going. Amen. Amen. So do not be discouraged this morning. I understand you crying, but that season is coming to an end. Amen. Hallelujah. God is saying, I'm ending your dryness. Brothers and sisters, I need to connect with you. This message is not only for myself. God is saying, I'm about to end your dryness. I'm about to end your unfruitfulness. Hallelujah. Imagine a place where there is no water. Imagine a desert. And God says this morning, I will create riv rivers in the desert. If there is no water, there is no life. You cannot live where there is no water. There is no life where there is no water. And God is saying, I will bring life where there is no water. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, if you are connecting with God and connecting with me, receive your portion. Amen. Receive your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's come back to Hannah. Very important subject. That's my second point. Your husband can only give you what he can. Amen. Amen. I just read First Samuel, the entire chapter 1. Have you read, read anywhere where it says that Hannah turned to her husband for help? was married to Elkanah. Hannah was crying every single day. Sometimes she did not eat. The rival was nagging her every day. But it does not say anywhere that she turned to her husband for help. Actually, one time, because she did not eat, the husband said to Hannah, why are you crying? Oh my goodness, why am I crying, really? That's what the husband said. Women, I'm still talking to you since last week, amen? amen. Elkanah gave love and Elkanah gave food. He gave actually double portion of food. Uh, let me talk to men for two seconds. There are needs that love only cannot cover. Yeah. There are needs that food only cannot cover. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hannah was not hungry. Hannah was not crying because she needed more food. Amen. Amen. But women, do I have women here? Yes. Your husband can only give you what he has. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yes, Your husband can only give you what he can. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hannah did not have kids. And the husband is giving you food. Yeah. Don't you understand today that your husband is limited? Yes. Your husband can only give you what he has. Yes. He gave love. He gave food. What else do you want? That's all he can give you. The real problem here was the womb. Am I right? But the womb was closed. And the husband 
has no power when it comes to the womb. It's God who closed the womb. It's God who closed the womb. So there are some needs only God can fulfill. Yeah. Amen? Are, are, are you getting me? Yeah. There is some needs that only God can fulfill. Yeah. When it comes to love, the husband can do that. Yes. When it comes to food, provision, that's his role. He can do that. But some other needs, he is powerless. Especially if the Bible says, God closed the womb. Let's be serious. Elkanah, the husband, was interested in three things. And most men here are only interested in three things. Beautiful wife, and that's Hannah. Hannah need, needed to be beautiful. Go to whatever and be beautiful. Okay? I will pay. <laughs> Elkanah was interested in children. He had already more than 10 children, 10 boys with Penina. So the husband does not care much where the kids are coming from, as long as the kids belong to him. <laughs> Amen? If you read the Bible very well, starting to Abraham and all the people, they, they don't care much where the child is coming from. As long as it's my child, I'm fine. Hallelujah. And the secret to all the women here, the husband is interested in a peaceful life. Yes. As long as no one is nagging him, as long as he's quiet in the, in the, in the, in the house, what, is, what, what do you want? That's all the husband is looking for. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. The wife is beautiful. Yeah. I have children. Doesn't matter where they're coming from, they are mine. Hallelujah. And no one is complaining. It's quiet. It's okay. And the husband is, the husband is having fun. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I do not believe that Elkanah did not know that something was wrong with Hannah. I do not believe that Elkanah did, never heard Penina say, oh, you, 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 you even don't have children. Eh? Look, look at myself. Hmm? I'm pregnant again. You, you have nothing. What's wrong with you? Don't tell me that Elkanah, for all these years, never heard that. He heard all of that. Amen? But Hannah was not complaining. Hannah was beautiful, so where is the problem? There was no problem. <laughs> Elkanah was not interested in anything else. He did not see, he did not hear. As long as you don't complain, all is well. All is well. Women, if you don't complain, all is well. Oops. What I'm trying to say here, your husband is not and will not be your solution. Yes. Thank Jesus. Amen? There are certain things he can do, but other things he cannot do. He is not and will not be your solution. Your husband will not fulfill everything that you need. Your hope is not your husband. Your refuge is not your husband. Amen. 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 Your husband can only give you what he has. Yes. Okay, I'm not trying to say stop asking what he does now. Okay, I'm, I did not say that. Okay, I'm just saying he can only give you what he has. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7 to verse 8, the door that God opens, no one can shut. Yes. And the door that he closes, no one can open. Yes. Hannah needed a son, but God had closed the womb. 
if God closes, it's only God that can open. But because Hannah needed a son, there was no need even to go ask for Elkanah. Because it's God who had closed. But today, we have to understand all of us. When your problem cannot be resolved on a lower court, you take it to the higher court. You take it higher, even to the heavenly court. Because that's the only way to get anything done. So let's be smart today. If you are, you are troubling with something, the lower court was unable to solve. Don't push me to preach this next Sunday again. Bring your problem to the higher court. Amen. Because the higher court, the heavenly court I'm talking about, yes. has the solution to your problem. Yes. Can really bring you hope. Can resolve your problem. Hallelujah. Amen. Be smart. It is only in God that you can find a solution for something that God himself has closed. Hallelujah. So I'm talking to women again. I love you very much. But it's God and God alone that can fulfill you. You have a productivity problem, fruitfulness problem. Turn to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to God. Amen. Hannah is a perfect example. From all these years, Hannah was not crying. Hannah was not nagging the husband. Yeah. She was praying. Women, just pray. Amen. Amen. When everything that you have tried comes short, any direction you try to go, it does not work. Brothers and sisters, go to the highest court. Amen. Because there, there will be a solution. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Bible says that God is able. God is able, nothing is impossible to him. Amen? Amen? So whatever situation you have, okay, I'm going to repeat that. Whatever situation you have, you can bring it to God. Because the Bible says he is able. Yes. God is able, hallelujah. Amen. God is able. Amen. And God, the Bible says, nothing is impos impossible to him. Yes. Amen? So this morning, humbly, I pray that God hears your cries. Amen. I pray that God hears your cries. Amen. Your heart is crying, even if nothing is coming out. Because you have been crying for so long. Maybe not you over here, but I'm talking to the people over here. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I pray this morning that God hears your cries. Hallelujah. May God restore your hope again. Amen. Your joy again. Amen. Don't believe it. It has been 10 years. You know, there is no... I told you the story of my cousin last week. I'm not going to say that. Go to YouTube. You'll get my, my story over there. Hallelujah. Amen. But if joy has been gone even for 10 years, God is able to restore that joy back again. Amen. Hallelujah. Third point. God needed a prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. God was in, in need of a prophet. Not a son. Hannah needed a son. Hannah was praying for a son. But God needed a prophet through Hannah. So impossible. Because God wants one thing and the wife wants something different. So it's not going to happen then. But today I'm saying... When God wants something great, he uses a man. Something beautiful, something solid, he uses a man. But when God wants something extraordinary, out of the common, he uses a woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I know men are not happy. <laughs> As long as women are happy, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
God did not need Hannah to give a son to Elkanah. This was ordinary. Elkanah had already 10 sons and so many daughters. You understand? But God was looking for something extraordinary. Not something uh, Penina was able to do every year. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is ordinary. God was looking for something extraordinary. That was above the ordinary. The problem here, Hannah was part of that plan to have something extraordinary. But Hannah did not know. She did not know. She prayed. She cried. She refused food. She prayed for the wrong thing. Year after year, it was not happening because she was in God's plan to have a prophet and she was praying for a son. So, no son then. Hallelujah. Amen. God needed a prophet for Israel. God needed a person who will speak on his behalf. Maybe I should revisit the, story, the, the history here. Hallelujah. If you read carefully, you will see that Hannah, at some point, stopped praying for a son. Remember the end of chapter 1? She stopped praying for a son, and she started praying for a prophet. She went to the church, the temple, a place where she was going every single year. She met the same pastor, Eli. She changed her prayer. She stopped praying for a son, and then she started praying for a prophet. She even took a vow, saying, my son will live here, will work for God here, and no one will touch even his hair. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Amen. Brothers and sisters, because she switched her prayer, the prophet, who was the prophet every single day, I mean the, the high priest, said, you can go home, and then whatever you're praying for will happen. That is what happened. God needed a prophet because Eli, the Bible said he has two sons. Am I right? But those two sons were, 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 were misbehaving. Hallelujah. So God, you cannot be a high priest if you are misbehaving. Those two sons, I'm, I'm not going to read all of that, were misbehaving. Actually, I, I'm going to read just a small portion. The first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verse 11 to 14, says, And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears of a tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from the beginning to the end. So God was already mad. God needed a change. God wanted to remove Eli and put his own person there. So for I told him that I will judge his family forever because of this, the sin he knew about. His sons made themselves contemptible, contemptible and failed to restrain, to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice of offering. Let me tell you, this is terrible. Every single year, all the Jewish were going to the, the temple for the atonement, bring sacrifice, so that their sins, so God will forgive their sins every single year. But God is saying here, there will never be atonement, atoned, there will never be, their sins will never be atoned by any sacrifice, any offering. So God was very upset. So God was in need of a prophet, and he has appointed Hannah 
to bring the prophet. But Hannah had no clue. Hannah wanted to do things like Penina and bring kids every year. Hallelujah. Here I'm reading the story. My point today is just to tell you that everything that happens is in God's plan. Amen. You have the right to choose if you want to follow God's plan or if you want to do things your own way. If you do things your own way, which means you disobey God, guess what? God will replace you the same way he was about to replace Eli. Whatever you do, as Apostle always say, it's a little for you and a little more for others. Yes. God's plan is a large plan. It's not a small plan. It's a large plan. For you to understand why Samuel needed to be a man that is uh, consecrated to the Lord, chosen by the Lord, I'm going to, to go a little further. What did Samuel do? And I'm going to talk about the king Saul. I preached here a few months ago that Saul was the first ever king for Israel. Before Saul, God was himself looking after the affairs of the, the children of God through judges like Eli and others too. God himself. But the problem was the other tribes, the Ammonites, the Philistines, the Malachites, and all the kites, all of those people had a king, a strong king. A man, they would say, this is my president. So the children of Israel were tired. They wanted a king too. They did not want God anymore. They wanted a king. So they chose a person, the, uh, a person among them, Saul. Saul was tall. Saul was strong. His skin was dark, maybe closer to mine. But he was a handsome guy, really tall. They said, this is our king. This is the person we want. And God told Samuel, just go and anoint him. Amen? So that's how Saul became king. You can imagine when God did not choose you, you you're not going to do well. Yes, he did good at the beginning, but in the end, it did not go well. So we move forward. Now God needed a king. A person he will choose himself. But in order to have a king that God chooses himself, he needs a prophet to anoint the king. Hallelujah. Amen. So you understand all the connections. Hmm? Yeah. Samuel needed to come. So Hannah needed to be there for Samuel to come, for Eli to go, to anoint Saul. But the, the goal is to find a king for Israel, a king that God will choose himself. And that king was David. And God told Samuel, go to the house of Jesse because I've read someone there to be my, the king for my people. Remember that Samuel went there. And Jesse brought all his sons, tall, strong like me here. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them. And the little David was not there. Remember the story. And Samuel will say, no. Oh, okay. They, they bring another one. Uh, no. Remember my message. Do you have another son? That was the title of my message. Until to the end, and Samuel asked Jesse, do you have another son? Because the person that was chosen by God to be the king, that was David, was somewhere there looking after the sheep. I mean, a person no one would even talk to. But that is the person God chose. Brothers and sisters, if you think you don't, not, you don't have all, all together, do not worry 
If God chose you, God will equip, will equip you, and God will announce you, and you will be a great king like David. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there because I will continue to Jesus. So let me back up. David received the visit of the prophet Samuel to be anointed as the king. Hallelujah. Amen. To replace Saul, who was also anointed by Samuel, just because the people chose him. Hallelujah. In order for David to be anointed, Samuel needed to exist. In order for Samuel to exist, Hannah needed to exist. And in order for Hannah to stop asking for a son, something needed to be done. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Samuel means heard of God. Every name in the Bible has a significance. So that's the story coming back. All of this to say what? For something to happen, something else must happen before. Hallelujah. For something to happen in your life, something else must happen before. For Samuel to be alive, Hannah, Hannah's womb needed to be closed until Hannah understands it's not a son that God wants. God wants a prophet. Amen. A prophet who will replace Eli. Because the sons of Eli cannot replace Eli. They have compromised themselves. And I need a prophet. A prophet who will talk on my behalf. A prophet who will anoint the king that I will choose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to tell you that God is in control of every single thing. Amen. God is in control, brothers and sisters. Amen. God is in control of everything. Amen. Let's go to the, the fourth point. And then we're going to talk now about Penina. Because this message today was on Penina. But you needed to understand all the story behind so you understand who Penina is. Last week, we said Penina was a disgrace. Penina was there to provoke Hannah. She had kids every day, but she was provoking Hannah. They will go to the, to the temple once a year. Oh my goodness, it's terrible. She will come with all her kids, displaying them. And I, yes, last Sunday, so I'm pretty sure she was pregnant again. Hallelujah. Oh, give me water. Oh, give me water. Oh, my goodness. It's hot. It's hot. You don't know what I'm talking about. Me, me, I know what I'm talking about. I've been in this for so long. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hold my hand. Walk with me. Oh, don't, don't go too quickly. I, I need a strawberry. I need... <laughs> some, some here know what I'm talking about. And Hannah was there going through all these problems. Handling Penina every single day at home, she was nagging and provoking her everywhere. Hallelujah. But today, because God is in control, some of you are asking themselves, why did God allow Penina to be like that? Why Penina? Today I'm saying Penina was a blessing. Hallelujah. Penina was a blessing for Hannah. I know we painted Penina as a bad person because her role was to push uh, all the buttons and making Hannah crazy. And Hannah was hard enough of Penina. Oh. I'm pretty sure Hannah was looking at Penina when she was praying and she wanted God to silence Penina. If you could even shut her mouth. <laughs> I don't want to hear about this woman again. But she wouldn't do that. What Hannah did not know at that time was that Penina was in God's plan too. It was not only Hannah, it was Penina as well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning I'm telling you, you are in God's plan as well. Amen. 
You may not have what you need. You may have been praying for something for so long. It's not happening. You are still in God's plan. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God used Penina to keep the pressure. Hallelujah. To maintain the pressure until Hannah's prayer changed. Amen? Amen. Until she stopped praying for a son, until she started praying for a prophet, until she gave away a child that was not conceived yet. You see how this thing is serious. Hannah offered to God a child that was not conceived yet. If you read the Bible, it will say the child was con conceived when they went back home. Even the, the Bible says, I'm going to read that because I believe it's very important. It says in the course of time, I think. It says here, verse 20, so in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant. Hallelujah. Yeah. But earlier, she had said to God, just look down at me. Find favor in my eyes. Give me a son. So Hannah got to the point where she was not looking for a son anymore. She understood that is the prophet that God wanted. And she gave that person to God before the child was conceived. Everything is in God's plan. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says God closed her womb. But after she signed that contract with God, that my son that I'm praying for will be a prophet, will be a person who will be in the temple working for God. That is, a, the Bible says she vowed. So it was a vow. So it's a contract. A vow is a contract. Hallelujah. A contract that you're not supposed to break. After she signed that contract, God says, I reopen the womb. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that whoever is here is listening to us this morning. Make a vow with God. God will reopen the womb that is closed. Amen. Your financial womb may be closed or partially closed. And you, really, you want it wide open. Make a vow with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because a vow is a contract that you cannot break. If you break it, there will be consequences. So, coming back to Penina, years after years after years, Penina was acting with completely impunity. No one will say anything to Penina. She will do whatever she wanted. Amen? Not once you hear God being upset about Penina. Not once you hear um, Elkanah being upset about Penina. It was easy for El Elkanah to come and say, okay, you stop it now. Stop it. Or, you know, I, I have many children already. Go home. I don't want you as a, as a woman because I love Hannah and you are making her life miserable. No, he never said it. So Penina had a green light to do whatever she wanted. She will provoke this woman day in and day out. And nothing will happen to her. This means there was a truth hidden somewhere there that you guys needed to hear today. There was a, a secret somewhere there. How come God loves Hannah and let Penina provoke her this much? That means there is a secret. How come God is not doing anything against Penina? Do you really think God is unfair? No, God is not unfair. That means there is some truth there that we did not know before. Half of this story was on Hannah, who 
had to overcome all the nagging, all the disrespect, and all the provocation from Penina. But the other half was a secret weapon called Penina. Brothers and sisters, Penina is a secret weapon. It is a secret weapon. Penina was not just a rival, a sister wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Penina was a medicine that Hannah needed. Penina was the only medicine that would cure Hannah. Hallelujah. Amen. Who would believe that? Hannah's womb is closed. Hannah cannot give kids. But the medicine that Hannah needed was a woman who was provoking her every single day. That is where the secret is. Before Penina, Hannah was okay. She knew she could not have kids. Her husband loved her anyways, so life was okay. She was content. She was comfortable not having kids. She was accustomed to her disease. She was accustomed to her luck. She was accustomed to not having a job or a good job. She was accustomed to go clean people's house while you have a diploma at home. Are you getting me? She was accustomed to that. But God had plans with Hannah. So something needed to happen for Hannah to wake up. Here comes Penina now. Do you understand that something needs to happen for something else to happen? The dryness you're going through, sometimes it needs to happen for you to wake up and do God's plan. Hallelujah. Penina needed to show up in order for God to have a prophet through Hannah. So this morning, the title of my message is Thank God for your Penina. Hallelujah. Amen. Penina could be your best friend. Since the, end, the young age, everything you want, your best friend is getting them. Oh, the boyfriend and your best friend is getting them. Hallelujah. Amen. Since you were kids, you don't understand what's going on. This is my friend. You cannot do this to me. Here again, she does it. Everything you think you deserve. Hallelujah. Your friend is getting them, not you. Everything you want. You pray, you go to church every Sunday, your friend doesn't, and everything, it's your friend who is getting them. You don't understand. A parent, Penina can be a parent who is too much controlling. Oh, you cannot dress like this. You cannot go to church like this. You cannot go to this movie. What is this on your lips? Remove that. That could be Penina. You may say, this party is it's just between us, it's an innocent party. Why should, why should I stay home? Everyone is going there. Penina. You work and you work well. You do things fretfully, seriously, with all your conscience. You respect the regulations, procedures, and everything. You work very hard for a promotion. Who gets the promotion? Penina, not you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You loved this guy or this girl very much. Everything was right. You probably had a ring already. And then you get a text message calling off the wedding. Penina. It's off. Penina. Penina is getting married. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, Penina was a bitter medicine. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. I hate medicine. I really do. I, I hate medicine. Penina. 
my wife can testify. Every time I, 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 I need to take a medicine, I have to take a medicine. It's a nightmare. I will look at this glass full of water. I will drink half, thinking how this little thing is going to go in my mouth. I will close my eyes and I will throw the thing with all the power that I have. And then I will close my eyes and I will swallow. And then my wife will tap on my shoulder to give me back the medicine. <laughs> I missed my mouth. It happens all the time. Penina is a bitter medicine. But that medicine cured Hannah. Hallelujah. That medicine cured Hannah. Whatever you're going through can be painful, can be difficult. You will question it. Why my mom is saying this? I don't understand my dad. Penina. That's what you need to align yourself. That's, that is the word you need to hear so that you can hear the will of God. Hannah needed Penina. If Penina was not there, she will just have boys and girls and everything, but not a prophet. When you are able to identify Penina in your, in your life, you have to thank God for that. Hallelujah. Penina did not bring herself in Hannah's life. She did not. But today, I want you to understand, Penina was an instrument in God's hands. So, your prayer to remove Penina in your life, it's a waste of time. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a waste of time. You are trying to remove Penina, a person that God is using to align you. Hallelujah. Amen. To align yourself. And you are praying against this. You praying against Penina. You want God to finish Penina, silence Penina. I don't want to see Penina anymore. I have applied to this job day and night. I don't understand how I cannot have the job. I want that job. God does not want you to have that job. It's God who closed the door. So thank God for closing a door that will bring you down. Hallelujah. God will not remove Penina in your life Amen. if Penina in, is in God's plan as well. I know the devil can do things, right? I'm not saying all the Peninas are God's plans, okay? In your life, brothers and sisters, something needs to happen before something else happens. A mockery, a challenge here, and all the things. It's just to push you to the next level. It to push you to focus on God and God alone because God is the solution. Hallelujah. Amen. When Penina comes in your life and does not go away, God wants you to focus on him so you can tap into a revelation. A young boy in Australia was born without arms and without legs. Tough life. Very challenging life. Parents, my goodness, could not believe it. How come? Everyone was very sorry for them. What are you going to do with a child? He does not have legs, no arms. What are you going to do? But I said earlier that you are in God's plan. This boy was in God's plan too. Amen. God had a purpose for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If God has a purpose for you, you don't need arms. You don't need legs. You need God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So one day, the boy realized he is different. He does not have arms. He does not have legs. 
Penina was the absence of arms and was the absence of legs. Hallelujah. But God had a plan. That is my point today. God had a plan for him too. Today, as I'm talking, Nick Voyechik, yes. hallelujah, is a great evangelist. Yes. He's an awesome public speaker. He is married to a beautiful wife, and they have four children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The plan for God for Nick was to be a public speaker, a person that everyone will listen to, everyone will notice, everyone will silence when he's talking and focus on him. There was a mission for Nick that only God knew. To be able to accomplish what God wanted, Nick needed a penny now. And remember, Penina is always painful. It's always difficult. They ask Nick one day, would you like to have arms and legs if all of this was, you know, to go back? He says, no. I'm, I can do everything. Everything. And the more important is the will of God in my life. My mission, what God put me here for. I am going to do it, and I'm doing it, and nobody can do it better than I am doing it right now. The only person who can limit you to accomplish what God's designed for you is you. Is you. When you're fighting Penina every day, I will show you. You have kids, I will show you. You we will see. Fight. Because Penina is nagging you and we nag her back. And then it's a fight in the house. You are missing the point. Hallelujah. Amen. God is in control of my life. And God is in control of your life. Amen. Regardless of what you have been able to accomplish. You belong to a plan that is larger than you. Larger than you. You just have a role to play. The same, the same way Hannah had a role to play. Her role was to focus on God. So that the prophet could come through. Once God has a prophet, God now has a voice. To be able now to put order in Israel. To be able to bring a king. Are you following me? Yeah. You are a leader in the church. You are a pastor. You are a singer. You are a guitar player. Um, It's not a coincidence if you are here. Brothers and sisters, it is not a coincidence. You are not here by mistake. I know some are here, and then they go. They come, and then they go. They probably don't know that there is a God has a plan for their life. You being here, it's not a mistake. If you do not accomplish your mission as God wants to be accomplished, God will send you penina. I'm telling you the truth. God will send you penina because God wants something to be accomplished through you. And you are playing some games. God will realign you. And then there is nobody that I know who can do that better than penina. Hallelujah. If you still don't understand when God sent Penina, you want to fight Penina, you fight Penina, God will replace you. Same way he replaced Saul. Same way he replaced Eli. The day God took care of the sons of Eli, two sons, the same day, dad, first son, second son, died the same day, all of them, three of them. So when you do not do the will of God, when you do not understand that this penina God is sending me is to align me, before going fight penina or praying against penina, put things right with God first. Hallelujah. If you do not do what God, the mission of God in your life, God will replace you. 
You don't want to sing? I'm not picking up on you. You don't want to sing? It's all fine. It's fine. God will replace you by another person who sings better than you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't want to preach? Don't worry. God will find another person who will come here and then I will go sit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God will punish me if I do not do what he asked me to do. Amen. I have zero excuse. Am I tired? Yes, I am. You are. You are. Everyone is tired. You have a mission. Go accomplish that mission. Amen. If you have a problem, pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We really have to understand that there is an urgency in us to align us properly. I always give the example of this sister who came to church uh, like two months ago. She came on Sunday. The following Tuesday, she was at the intercession prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Two weeks after, I saw her dressed with her um, uh, tag, um, um, like Carol, like you two, here. She was a greeter. She does not know anybody in the church, but she's greeting. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, this is a person who has understand something. God has a plan for me. I am not new here. I'm here in the house of the Lord to serve the Lord. Because if you do not do the purpose of God in your life, where God has sent you, God will send another person who will accomplish that job. The word of God is yes and amen. Another person will raise up and to do exactly what the purpose of God in your life. And then you, you end up like Eli and his sons. Hallelujah. The sons of Eli needed to be replaced. They were on the field playing, but they were not following God's rules. Once they started doing stupid things, Immediately, the next prophet was in preparation. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like a football field. Hallelujah. A soccer field. You're playing, you're playing, but because you think you know everything, you know, when the ball comes, you stop the ball. And then you, you're playing some games. You're not doing things according to God. From the time you start doing that, God prepares another person. Another person starts warming up. Have you seen the soccer uh, uh, match? Yeah. Uh -huh. You will see people warming up and you don't know why. They are playing here, and you guys are running. What are you doing? What, what is happening here? God knows why this person is warming up. Because the person I sent there to do a certain job is not doing the job. So your replacement will start warming up. Warming up. And if you are smart enough, you have to look at the people who are warming up. Huh? I am the number nine. There is a number, another number nine warming up over there. You become serious. <laughs> serious. Hallelujah. Amen. When you think you sing better than anybody else, there is no one who can lead this thing better than you. You start playing games, God will send someone warming up immediately to replace you. Immediately. Because the mission of God has to move forward will move forward with you or without you. Hallelujah. Amen. I should not be sending text messages asking people, come on Wednesday. I should not be doing that. Because when you're not doing what you're supposed to do, God somewhere else is preparing another person. Brothers and sisters, when you are watching Oprah, instead of being here on Wednesday, <laughs> someone else is warming up. Because the, what you were supposed to learn on Wednesday is not going to happen. So God will raise up someone else who will learn to accomplish the mission that we're supposed to do. 
The plan of God is not small, it's big. Amen. I went from Hannah to David. Do you know how many generations are in between those two people? Many. Hallelujah. Amen. If Hannah would raise her hand against Penina, fight Penina, Samuel was in danger. If Samuel was in danger, who would anoint Saul? Who will anoint, uh, anoint uh, King um, David? Who? So God will find someone else to do that. Brothers and sisters, I should not be texting people. Attend this, attend that. Please do this. This is very important. It's because I see spiritually that you need something. God is talking to someone today. Am I right? Don't be silent. I'm closing. God's plan must pass and it will pass. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, God will send another person to warm up. Another person to warm up. If you have been attending this church just one Sunday, you are not a visitor anymore. You are not a guest anymore. You are, if you want to continue to come here, you are part of the church. A brother came to church. The same week I asked him, brother, is there anything you want to do? I did not even know if you want to be a member of this church. He said, I'm good with kids. Youth, it's my area. I said, okay, fine. Would you talk to Alex and Pam? And husband and wife did it. Today, they lead our youth. Amen. These are the people, hallelujah. If I ask them to stand and to name people here, they will not be able to name 20 people because they are still new in the church. There is an urgency to stand up, urgency to do something. The, the church is going too fast. Hallelujah. That's the reason we are calling it fast. Amen. 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 My point before I close is simple. If you really understand the teaching today, you can reduce the numbers of penina in your life by aligning quickly with the will of God. You know what God wants you to do. The more you do your own thing, the more God sends peninas to bring you back, to align you. So you can reduce the number of penina in your life. You can also reduce how long penina will live in your life. Hallelujah. Because Penina comes for a purpose. Penina provokes for a purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. If you do not rise up, Samuel is not coming through you. Penina existed just for one thing, to help Hannah understand what God wanted so that Instead of asking for a son, she asks for a prophet, and then a prophet comes forth. What I'm trying to say here is, once Hannah signed this contract with God, Penina disappeared. Hallelujah. Amen. Once she signed, remember, they went to the temple to pray. This woman was deeply affected, deeply troubled, that's what the Bible says, and then she prayed, and then the man of God says, whatever you're praying for will happen. Hallelujah. That was the end of Penina. So the end of Penina is when Hannah aligned with the will of God. Amen. The Bible does not talk about Penina anymore. From that time, moving forward, until the end of the Bible, the, you can research, there is no more penina. Brothers and sisters, what will silence penina in your life? It's not because you can yell or fight penina, or you can bother this person to silence penina. No. It's to pray, understand the will of God, 
and God will take care of Penina. Yes. God took care of Penina once Hannah understood what to do. Amen. No more Penina. So I'm saying to you today, do not make Penina's season longer than it should be. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hannah had the power, but she needed to understand. Hallelujah. If there is one person who can silence the enemy in your life, it's you. And if you don't understand that, no problem. God will skip you and will find another person to do mission with them. You, God will leave you with Penina. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that is not a good thing. If it was not for Penina, Hannah could have remained barren. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I understand Penina is difficult. I understand all of that. But you tell me if the only way to get juice out of an orange, if it's not to squeeze it, the more you squeeze, the more you get juice. Am I right? Yes. Uh -huh. God is doing the same with you. God will squeeze you to get what he's looking for. Amen. Amen. The more you squeeze, the more you get juice. Yes. <laughs> if you get my message today, just decide to be serious. Hallelujah. Decide to be serious. Amen. Don't wait for my text message. Amen. Just decide to be serious with God. Yes. Give priority to the things of God. Ah, uh, okay. I say, be serious. Give priority to the things of God. Amen. If you decide to give priority to the things of God, if you decide to listen to the voice of God, and I pray and I declare that God will end the painful, penina season in your life. God will end it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not a child that you're going to give birth to. It is a CEO that you're going to give birth to. Yes. Hallelujah. A president, someone very important. Yes. Brothers and sisters, if you understood my message, if you tapped into the revelation, it is not a son that God is going to give you. It's someone who is very important. Eh? You're praying for something small. God has something big for you. In order for you to get there, you have to understand messages like this. Hallelujah. If you capture that, if you understand, I pray and I release the anointing of God on you. Hallelujah. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive your CEO in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Receive your doctor, your engineer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's where God is bringing you. How many of you receive today? How many of you receive today? Hallelujah. Stand up as we finish. Hallelujah. Just take 10 seconds of silence. Reflect on the message today. Some of us, I need to thank Penina in our life. Yes, the medication is beer. But it is what I need to cure my disease. It is difficult. Penina is mocking me, is provoking me. Not to fight back, but to focus on God and God alone. The Bible says, I will fight your battles. Last week, I told you, don't fight back. Because God said, I will fight your battles. This week, I'm telling some of the peninas that you experience in your life are necessary for you. 
you need them so you can focus on God. God is the solution for your problem. It's not your work that will give you joy and fulfillment. It is not your husband or your wife that will give you peace. It is only God. God has the solution for you. God has the solution for you, brothers and sisters. God can restore your joy. God can restore your hope. God can bring you to a level you have never experienced before. It's only God that can fulfill you. You are experiencing a moment of unproductivity while we are all praying for fruitfulness. Forget Penina for a second and focus on God. Penina as well is on a mission in your life. It's difficult. It's making you, it's dragging you crazy. But Penina is on a mission. You will not get where you're going without Penina. Today is a day to thank God for Penina in our life. Hallelujah. It's difficult. I understand. But nothing is easy. Nothing is just like that easy. It is not. Let's proclaim today that we're putting everything back in God's hands. That's where there is security, protection. Everything. Only God knows. Only God knows. Father, thank you for the message. Thank you for this love that suppresses understanding, Lord. We thank you because for every season you are able to teach us. Every season you are able to talk to us. Every season you give us a word for us to align. Every season, Lord, this is because you love us and you love us very much. The same way that Eli was able to say a word and Hannah was able to conceive. Father, with the authority you have given me in the house, I end the activities of Penina in the house of the members of this church in Jesus' name. I put an end to that. I put an end to the suffering. Penina has been active for way too long. It is time to end the activities of Penina. And it's ending in the life of the, the Crosspoint Fellowship members. Right now. Right now in Jesus' name. We end it. It could be a pursuit of a dream job. It could be a disease that is driving you crazy. It could be a husband that you are still looking for everywhere. And then there is nothing. It could be a wife that you want. Oh, hallelujah. Penina has been active for way too long. Today, we are ending that in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Go home. And whatever you have prayed for will happen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May God bless you.